Today on The Hookup, we're gonna build a sensor that monitors the status of a computer and enables remote power on and shut down with a Wemos D1 Mini. We're also gonna throw in some temperature and humidity monitoring for good measure. My wife's computer sits hidden on top of this Murphy bed completely out of sight. It's a really great solution if we want to keep the computer powered on all the time. But there's no good way to turn it on without standing on top of a chair and pressing the power button manually. And since she doesn't use this computer every day, it seems like a bit of a waste of energy to keep it on all the time. My original solution to this problem was to use the wake on land functionality of most ethernet controllers. Home Assistant even has a really great wake on land switch that monitors the state of a computer and allows it to show the correct status on the switch, and it works great. The problem is that wake on land only works from sleep or hibernate on Windows 10. And if the power goes off, or it even flickers a little bit, this computer will be all the way off which means you still have to stand up on a chair and turn the thing on manually. I even have the restore state on power loss enabled in the BIOS, but the computer is still inexplicably off like once or twice a month. Who knows? Last week, there was a post on the Home Assistant subreddit by user Ranfan, where he used OptiIsolators to do a virtual button press on his PC. It seemed like a much better solution to my power problem. If you watched my video on my DIY pool controller, it's basically the same concept. Ranthan used the USB port on his computer to monitor the power, but I'm actually just going to use the computer's power LED as an indicator as to whether the computer is on or not. Here's our wiring diagram. First of all, for this project, I decided to use a D1 Mini, but any ESP8266 based chip should work. The reason that I use the D1 Mini is that it doesn't come with pre-soldered header pins, so it's easier to use without a prototype board. I'm just going to splice into the existing power wires so the manual power button stays functional. To monitor the state of the computer, I'm going to wire D0 to the power LED positive and the power LED negative to ground on the D1 Mini. You could also use an opto-isolator here to keep the D1 Mini completely separated from your PC, but I checked the voltage on the LED and it was 3.2 volts, so that's perfect for the 3.3 volt GPIO pins of the D1 Mini. To handle the virtual button presses, I'm going to wire D5 to the positive side of our opto-isolator and I'll connect the other side to ground using a small 150 ohm resistor to limit the current. On the switch side of my opto-isolator, I need to determine which wire is the positive voltage and which one is the ground on the original power button. I'm going to use my multimeter to make sure, but they're actually marked power button positive and power button negative on my motherboard. I want to hook up the positive wire to the collector and the negative wire to the emitter on my opto-isolator. Because I have such a small number of components, I'm just going to hot glue this opto-isolator to the back of the D1 Mini instead of putting it on some sort of prototype board. I'll also put some hot glue on the wires to give them a little bit of strain relief. While I'm at it, I'm going to throw one of these DHT11 sensors on there to get humidity and temperature readings for the guest room. The DHT sensor group is really handy because they're one wire sensors, meaning all you have to do is hook up the power, the ground, and then a single data wire. My code is going to watch the MQTT topic commands PC and if it gets the message on while the LED state is off, it'll write D1 high for one second to simulate a button press. If it gets the message off while the LED state is on, it will do the same thing. If it gets an off message or an on message when the LED is in the same state, it won't do anything because that means that the computer is already in the correct state. The sensor will also report any changes in the LED state to the MQTT topic state PC, so my Home Assistant instance will always report the correct state of the computer. Every 30 seconds, this get temp function will run and will send out the current temperature reading and current humidity reading via MQTT. To set this up in Home Assistant, we'll need to add a couple entries to our configuration.yaml file. My first entry will be for the computer switch. This is an MQTT switch with a command topic of commands PC and a state topic of states PC. The on payload will be on and the off payload will be off. We'll also set up two sensors for the DHT11. In my case, I'm going to call them guest room temperature and guest room humidity. All that's left to do now is test it. Let's go plug it in. First, let's check to make sure the temperature and humidity looks correct. 
Seems good to me. And here we can see that Home Assistant correctly reports the state of the computer. Let's see what happens when I flip the switch. Perfect. I'm going to leave my D1 Mini all exposed like this, just sitting on top of the Murphy bed, because that's the style that I've already got going on up here. But if you'd rather have a nice case, I've included a few good 3D printed options in the description below. Of course, all the parts you need to make this project are included down in the description. Remember that using those Amazon links helps me earn money to buy stuff for future projects on this channel. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.